Hello, and welcome to The Next Crypto Gem, the show where we test the knowledge, skills, and creativity for four teams who are poised to take the internet by storm. I'm your host, Anna Roy Smith. I'm also a comedian and content creator, and back in the day, I worked in venture capital. That's kind of a brag in this world. So while I may not know too much about crypto, I do love money. The Web3 world can be overwhelming, so I'll be here to guide you through it all and ask you all of the really tough questions like, what is cryptocurrency? Uh, that's a great question. I don't have an answer. Like a band or something? Oh, uh, crypto? That's a government psyop. Crypto? Well, first thing you gotta do is break down the word. Crypt. Crypt. The grave. The dead. Currency. Crypt. Currency. Currency for the undead. It's gonna be a whole new field. Watch each week as these teams compete in complex challenges to see who has what it takes to be crowned the next crypto gem. To decide on their fate, let's meet our expert judges. As a cryptocurrency enthusiast, author, investor, and entrepreneur, Leah Halpern has followed the industry closely for the past few years earning most of her income in Bitcoin. Leia has seen the fantastic potential of blockchain technology and how it can revolutionize different industries. No stranger to being in front of the camera, Leia hosts her own YouTube channel with more than 60 million views. Leia, welcome. Tell me, what are you looking forward to on the show? Well, it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to seeing some really good projects. There's been a really rocky road in the crypto space over the last two years during the bear market. We've seen a lot of scams, We've seen a lot of pump and dumps projects come and go. So all of that has given the space a really bad name. So I'm looking to find some really good, credible projects that can actually help grow the space and give crypto the good name that it deserves. Now you say good projects. Are there any specific types of projects that you want to see come on the show? It's a great question. Well, as a Bitcoin investor, my priority is decentralization and actually making sure that each individual, each user who's using the game or whatever it is, actually owns their own assets because for me that's the point in crypto you know you want to be away from the state you want to be free you want to be a sovereign individual and actually own your own assets and you have to be very careful because there's a lot of projects that pretend to support so, uh, you know self-sovereignty self-custody but in fact they don't so i'm going to be keeping a very sharp eye out for those projects okay well i'm looking forward to hearing all of your hot takes it's gonna be spicy great brian d evans Inc. 500 entrepreneur and successful early stage investor in the tech and crypto spaces, Brian has founded several thriving tech startups, including marketing firm BDE Ventures, media platform Influensive, and a keen eye for spotting promising businesses. Brian, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Now tell me, what types of projects are you excited about? You know, as someone that's been in the space for quite a while, about eight years, um, investing heavily in crypto and blockchain projects, probably hundreds now, um, digital assets really took me by surprise, NFTs and everything that's happening in the Web3 gaming space. So I'm really focused on Web3 gaming and infrastructure, anything that brings in lots of people to the space, I'm heavily focused on. Great. And tell me, what are you looking forward to the most in finding our next crypto gen? You know, I think it's really about education to me. It's, it's really teaching people what this space is really about, the ethos of the space, what all these terms and what all these things really mean and how people can benefit from them. So I'm really here to help educate and show what all these things are. Great. Well, I can't wait to learn about it. So thank you. <laughs> Introducing our esteemed judge, George Tung. 
With over 10 years of experience in the space, he has a deep understanding of technology, the markets, and the potential of this exciting new asset class. As an investor, George has been involved in several successful crypto projects, including the early days of Bitcoin and Ethereum. George is the host of the YouTube channel Cryptos R Us, with over 110 million views. George is a collector of Legos and basketball cards, which is a fun and great way to diversify his portfolio. With expertise and insight, George, what brought you to this panel? I'm very excited to be here. I'm here because I want to help bring more awareness to crypto, expose it to a larger audience. And I can't wait to see the contestants, how they handle our challenges. Well, I hope you're ready to answer a lot of questions. I have one, which is, what do you think our next crypto gem project will look like? As an investor and as someone that looked at a thousand projects in the past, I'm looking for real utility, something that can make our lives better. Whether it's sports or healthcare or entertainment, crypto can make that happen, and that's what I'm looking for. So if I invest in crypto, my life will be better? Possibly. Okay. Well, sold. Ultimately, I decided to take the chance, and I bought that first Bitcoin, and I read that white paper, and I was intrigued. I mean, that little research that I did that night on my computer changed my life. You know, I'm making millions of dollars, and then millions of dollars turned into billions of dollars, and it seemed like a billion. I find myself wondering a lot you know, what my life would have been if I had never taken a chance. All right, judges, it is time to select our first team. What brought you to this project? It really was just an idea of me wanting to be able to use my own crypto anywhere. How do you handle stress? I mean, the competition side of things, we're used to that. There's always competition. The whole crypto thing, it's all about, you know, competition for attention more than anything else. So I'm definitely used to the competition. That's not a problem. Why is your project going to win? What sets DBI apart from the others is that I code everything by hand. I write code with pen and paper, old school. Then I transcribe it to Microsoft Word because it has spell check. What benefit do you bring to the Web3 world? You go into that Sangha, the Suka Sangha, that's what we call our Telegram, that's the community where it's located. You find love, wisdom, goodness, calmness, self-control, all of these mental health related things that right now couldn't be a better theme with everything. How does your project reach beyond the Web3 world? Uh, being able to give back definitely, like I say, we've no investment needed. We've got a platform where users can come and actually earn without having to put anything up front. Obviously, some time is needed. Time is money, so I suppose there is an investment needed with time. Uh, but apart from that, you know, they don't need to put any money up with their offering work. And somewhere for them to actually just come and earn uh, small amounts or large amounts, depends on how much time they want to invest with us. It's like a token I've never seen in the fact that it's truly a decentralized token that can can lead to anything. All right, judges, have we made any decisions? For our first team, we decided to go with a project which is entirely original. It goes beyond focusing on the usual transactional tokenomics and instead is actually focused on building a community of global change. So the team joining us in the final four is Suka. The innocence of meme coins, the, the real simple nature of them really helps people get involved. That's why you'll notice meme coins always lead the charge in these bull markets. So we're, we're really, we're, we're in a good spot. 
There's a market psychology element that most people don't realize until it starts to move and then all of a sudden everybody just gets excited and then Hello, Suka. Welcome. Suka. Hey, how are you? Hey, what's going Good. on? Good. Where are you guys coming in from? Uh, sunny South Florida. Uh, wow. So we're happy to be here. My name's Phil Russell, you guys, with the Suka community. Really grateful volunteer. Patty Stash. Uh, I'm kind of the loudmouth voice of the community, so, uh, you know, people kind of... So watch out for you. Yeah, I talk a lot. So. Okay, great. <laughs> I was nervous at first, but now I'm starting to get into it. I was starting to feel a little bit. It's exciting. I felt, felt all bricked up and rigid. It was... Uh, yeah, and volunteer members out in front of the cameras. Very excited. Sent me to be his keeper. Oh, wow. So, I love it. Do you guys always speak in unison, too? We try. Cool. <laughs> I guess. The one thing I will say about the project is there's a lot of people that see it, and they think it's just this simple token. But once they actually do the research, then they realize it's completely different. And you have to have an education on the token to really understand the value of it. Yeah, we've got uh, the opportunity of getting involved in Suka that was built through the bear market for the bull market. We're just getting started. We're really excited to be here, guys. Let's go. All right, judges, it is time to select our second team. What sets you apart? I think without doubt, we've, we've got the strongest building engine in terms of um, world building that any metaverse has got. I mean, it, it basically looks makes Minecraft look a little bit like child's play. I mean, you can terraform your world. You, you can make rocks, make trees, make, make um, you know, sort of mountains out of anything. What do you see as the future of Web3? What we want to do is empower creators to create their own platform, essentially. It's like everything would be branded to their own brand. So everything from the font to the background, sound effects or ambient music, uh, the different user journeys they can make and the way they structure their story, like that's able to be customized to fit their world. And they own their customer data. They are in control of how they monetize their audience through that platform. Um, so it's really about letting them actually build their own brand. Our pitch to, to developers and blockchain game developers specifically is make a great game and we'll take care of the rest. We'll do the marketing. We'll bring players to your game. Um, um, you know, we'll give you a sustainable revenue model instead of a flash in the pan. The photo clip project wants to be different. We want to exhibit uh, our pieces in galleries and uh, museums. And I ultimately want to make a book of the pieces as well. What was your ultimate goal in starting your project? I want Thrubs to be a success to prove that, you know, the real money is going to get made when you don't scam people and you don't steal marketing funds and you, and you don't raise these pre-sales and promise the world and not deliver it. You know, download our app before you buy our tokens. We already made it. We spent our own money to make it. Very competitive and I'm, I'm sure I'll make it um, some good viewing. <laughs> We all seek different in our own ways and nowhere lets you be who you are and find what you seek like the Northern Territory. So if you seek different, this is the holiday for you. All right, judges, it is time to select our second team. Yes, the second of our final four has really elevated the Web3 gaming space. They've created this smart, immersive world that really toes the line well between traditional gaming and Web3 gaming and showcasing the benefits of Web3 gaming at the same time. Welcome, Vulcan Forged. Welcome, Vulcan Forged. Tell us a little about yourself. Myself or the company? Yeah, yourself. Myself, What's yeah. your name? Um, my name is Jamie Thompson. I'm hey. the CEO of Vulcan Forge. And I guess I'm here representing the entertainment, the gaming, the more fun side of crypto in this uh, competition, in this in this show, um, and doing my thing. Not the boring side, the more fun side. Well, I wouldn't like say it. that, but a little bit little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a great introduction by Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, it's weird for me because I know a lot of people not in this industry, they wouldn't know who they are, but in my industry is like three celebs sitting here. That was cool. And, you know, flattery gets you everywhere, so that's obviously why I said, no, I'm not. I do like your guts. Well, it's great having another Brit in a crypto space. Your accent just shines through. Absolutely fabulous, isn't it? There's it two is. of us now. Two, two, two in us amongst an ocean of Americans and, um, and Asians. Um, it's true. It's true. There's never any Brits. It's, it's Americans and Asians. So. I, I know. That's probably why your videos stand out so much, because I can just hear that British accent piercing through. Uh-oh. Yeah, reminds you of home. Yeah. Same with you and your project. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Jamie, I'm, I'm curious what brought you into the space in the first place? But actually, we worked in traditional gaming before, and um, it was quite a good business. It was quite a good market. And then we sort of toyed around with the idea of NFTs, which are sort of ownership and digital assets. Um, and that just sort of exploded in one of our games. We thought, well, there's definitely a market for this. Um, then we tried another game, and that got bigger. And we kept sort of expanding and bootstrapping our way up. 
And then I sort of love the idea of having sort of economies within games, which sort of gives a whole new dimension to gaming. Whereas before it's just fun, 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 kill, kill, kill. Now it's more like, oh, how can we trade? How can we earn? How can we sort of, I don't know, a bit more kind of immersive for the human. Uh, we started a traditional game studio um, probably about five, six years ago. And we sort of expanded and sort of moved into the Web3, the crypto space, um, probably about three years ago now. Um, we started as a team of two and now there's a team of about 160 of us and um, we're expanded by the day and enjoying the ride so far. Now the gaming world is very competitive. Would you say you're competitive in real life? Absolutely, wouldn't be here if I wasn't. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to get ready and uh, enjoy the self along the way. Great, and take everybody down. Yes, absolutely. Not the judges, but of course the contestants. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe the... Well, I'm going to be British too by the end of this. <laughs> is that a British accent? <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin's maximum supply is set at 21 million, meaning that once 21 million Bitcoins have been mined, no new Bitcoins will be created. But everyone can relate to that. From the moment we're born, we too have a maximum supply. All right, judges, it is time to select our third team. What brought you to this project? Dope feels like it's kind of the culmination of all the things that I've done, you know, really taking what I've learned in the in real life brand building world and how to build a community around a brand, as well as, you know, understanding a little bit more of the differences in, in the Web3 space and bringing them both together to really you know, create something, something special that, that is unlike anything that's out there right now. You know, my background is, is pretty, I'll call it simple. Um, when I was a kid, I did not come from a lot of opportunity or money, um, you know, raised um, in, in a home with a, you know, single parent for the most part, who then, you know, remarried, um, focused on a an island life where I was focused on helping provide, helping survive, and you know, one day to get an education. How does your project reach beyond the Web3 world? Well, my long-term goal from the very beginning was to collect as many records from the Billboard chart in the rock and roll era that started in late 55 as I could. What kind of impact would you like your presence on the show to have? Well, that someone told me this when I was. 17 instead of pushing me into the trying to push me into corners or how it's supposed to be always someone told me no just you go get them <laughs> exactly what you want make those mistakes fall stand up into it yeah whether i win or lose i'm not really afraid of the outcome because i know our quality product it may not fit somebody's opinion or personality but there's no like convincing somebody of that value because we know that that's there. How do you handle stress? Is be as committed as I possibly can to whatever it is I'm trying to do, whatever my vision or intention is, and then completely releasing the attachment of how that's gonna look. How I handle stress and how I deal with stress is I actually thrive in those chaotic environments. Um, I love being in, uh, in the fire, if you will, uh, as a performer, uh, being on stage, uh, in front of everybody is actually more comfortable to me than sitting at home on my couch. Anna, this was a tough decision. All these projects came in super prepared. They're very passionate. They have very loyal communities. However, this is a competition, so we have to select the best project with the most potential. So we are selecting the Web 3.0 gaming project, DeFi Kingdoms. DeFi Kingdoms, welcome to the show. How Thank you. Very happy to be here. Excited to be a part of the show, the competition, and to meet and compete with the other contestants. Tell us about yourself. Uh, sure. My name is Dreamer. I'm the president at Kingdom Studios, which is the main development company for the mentioned DeFi Kingdoms. Great. Now, I've heard you have a lot of hobbies, right? I do, yeah. I I've think... heard you're a skydiver. <laughs> yeah, so actually my professional background uh, was at investment banking. I was a risk manager at Goldman Sachs. So this conversation actually has happened a lot because 
it was quite odd to have my background and still have my professional job. So skydiving, surfing, scuba diving, martial arts. I kind of, I like to do different things. Um, it also helps think differently, approach problems differently, work with people that are different from you more effectively as well. But there are just so many Web3 games out there talking about ownership and decentralization, but how are you different? Um, I would say, you know, being different will kind of vary at that snapshot in time. So if we look at today, we have consistently proven our ability to deliver advancement in the game itself. Many talk about ideas of games, um, they go and they raise, and then you wait years to see if anything comes out of it. We have weekly AMAs, it's Ask Me Anything, kind of like a press conference where we meet with our community and show what we've done the last week. That's really hard. Traditional companies are thinking in quarters or years to report back. We're reporting in real time. Um, when you look at what we've built so far, we not only have a good roadmap for a long-term tokenized role-playing game, but all of the pieces around it. So why are we different? We are also a gamified Web3 metaverse. We have our own decentralized exchange that allows people to come on and off the platform. We have our own in-game NFT marketplace where you don't have to rely on other third parties to actually sell and buy your NFTs. Um, as you mint in-game, everything is kind of a closed ecosystem so all the resources the questing um, the competing with others it happens naturally within DeFi kingdom why would you be a good contestant the way we look at it and the reason why we are actually going to be the next crypto gem that hit is because we're not focusing on the people in web3 we're not focusing on the four percent in the world that actually is our own echo chamber that by the way in a bear market everybody's pissed off anyway the way we look at it is with gaming we have the opportunity to onboard the other 96 percent and the way we're doing it is not requiring crypto not requiring expensive nfts you don't we're not even using the term from nft in our marketing it's digital collectible ownership our native token spi built on the ethereum blockchain and gspi built on binance chain have both fixed supply of 1 million tokens each no team allocation no ico no pre-sale just a fair launch what future impact will your project have on the web 3.0 space so for example i already had conversation with schools uh, who is having for example on metaverse space and um, the school very interested to like host on our planet and they could also as well solve the problem like a monolingual metaverse because they could just copy this school to different cities, different countries, and this way handle the school individually. What was your ultimate goal in starting your project? It's really measured by happiness in my household and having financial security. Crypto is so complicated. There are so many moving parts as far as the emerging technology that we're in, and what we've decided to do is strip, strip it down, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Create a game and go to where the gamers are used to playing and how they're used to playing it, and then make the technology the background. It's very, really pretty simple. Am I, am I happy? Am I worried about money? And can I take care of my wife and children? Okay, so. What are we thinking? We cannot go with team two. No? Well, there's entirely centralized. Well, which team well, do, you, do you want to go with? I think team three is perfect. I love the decentralization. I love the fact that they actually offer value and they actually want to help build the community. Team two, they could dump on the market easily. But they're building utility. It's not there. A little bit centralized, but I definitely think they're much better than say team three or team four. Passion matters. Passion doesn't matter because it's about being trustless. We don't want to have to trust that they're not going to dump on their followers, dump on the community. You still want to see passionate leaders that really believe in their project. But you don't want to trust these passionate leaders. We want to, you might as well trust the banks then. I mean, you're right. We, we don't want centralization. So why are we going for them then? I, we're not. I, we're not. Like it's a tough decision. No, I mean, no, no, I think no, they're not centralized. Yeah, they're not going to dump on anyone. Okay. Wow. I left for two minutes and your passion is just so hot right now, huh? <laughs> You doing okay? Well, well, you know, it's it's serious. It is serious. It's a decision for sure. It's tough. I'm glad I'm not one of those teams right now, but it's time to take a break and we have to come up with a final decision for next week.
Unfortunately, time is up on this episode of The Next Crypto Gem, and our judges have yet to pick a fourth team. The competition is already heating up, and we're not even at our first challenge yet. Remember to tune in next episode where we will reveal which project has what it takes to become the fourth and final contestant. Until then, stay curious, stay informed, and we'll see you next week on The Next Crypto Gem. Wow, and there you have it, the first crypto competition on mainstream TV. Jet, what are you thinking? I'm so excited, we made it happen, this is historic. Crypto is on mainstream TV and we have ourselves a competition. Now tell me, what do you think of the judges' choices? I think they got it right for the most part. You seem a bit hesitant, what do you mean? There were times where they could have went a different way, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna second guess the judges. Brian, Leia, George, they are some of the best people in crypto. That's why they're judges on our show. I agree, you have three of the top crypto influencers who are all top educators in their field. Jet, what are you most excited for? Look, I can't wait to see who is gonna be the fourth and final team to make it on the show. I guess we'll have to wait till next week to find out.